Hello YouTube! Welcome back to... Wait... Yeah, welcome back to Foam and Lizards. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you how I build a new vivarium with a waterfall and this time also a cave. Because I had never done that before and I was like, yeah, let's try it. So, and it turned out pretty, pretty okay. So, yeah, I'm going to show you how I build it. But, just not everything. Because I didn't film everything. So if you want a full waterfall vivarium build, you have to click over here or here. I don't know which corner it is, but click it. It's another vivarium that I built. That one. And this time it's more about cave and some other techniques that I used. So yeah, maybe you have something to it. Maybe you have some use to it. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, just see for yourself. But I'm gonna show you the vivarium right now. Here it is. You can see I have a waterfall in that... Damn it! Honey! Sweetie! So I have a waterfall in that corner. Sorry about that. And it goes down there. A small waterfall. And well, let's zoom in a bit because this is a little bit annoying. Like I said, it's the waterfall over there behind the rock. And I have a small pond over here. And it goes down here into a little swamp and over there is the cave it has three entrances one over there, one over there, one over there it has my azureas in it I have three of them, two males, one female and I have a vein on the top because I had a raining system over there but yeah when I got it out I had holes that the the flies could go out so I want to fix that so I did it that way so yeah that's the basic thing that I'm going to show you the rest are just plants and there's another hole in the corner but you can't see it the frogs really really like this vivarium they are always showing themselves most of the time they are actually in the swamp so yeah well anyway without further ado Let's build it! So first of all, if you hear some noise, a high pitch, then it's my bird. That, that is what I mean. So I apologize for that. But yeah, you will survive. I hope. So this is the vivarium that I used. It's an extra terrarium, which is 60 by 45 by 45 centimeters. The very first thing that I did was figuring out how high the pump could reach. I used a cheap pump for this build because I wanted a more quiet stream. After that, I got a thick plate of foam and drew the top on it. This part would be carved out so I had enough room for the pump. This part would be the pond where the waterfall would start and this side would be the rocks. When I was satisfied, I carved it out with a hot wire foam cutter and laid it in the terrarium to see if it was the right size. I then laid it on top of the foam and made the next one bigger. This way it would give the fake rock some natural look and it would not be the same size from top to bottom. I carved out 7 pieces. Only the bottom 4 were the same size so the cave would not be too big. When it was complete, I marked where the water level would be. The pump that I used would still work in 2 cm of water so I knew that I don't have to make a paludarium for this to work. I still wanted the water level to be high enough to make a little swamp. I carved out the pond and the square for the pump. If you do this, make sure you can reach down for if the pump breaks and you have to replace it. As always, you need a decent water flow for a waterfall to work. I turned over the bottom piece of foam and carved out lines for plastic tubes. I then cut the tubes the right size and glued some netting on. I did this so if I ever had tadpoles they would not swim to the clay balls which I would add later. A stupid decision because the tubes would be beneath the swamp. But yeah, moving on. I then drew three circles where I wanted to have the entrances of the cave. Believe it or not, this was actually the most difficult part of the whole build. Not drawing the circles, 
but figuring out how I wanted the cave system to go. All three entrances were on a different level and the tunnels had to be connected. But after making my tiny little brains work for like half an hour, I worked it out. Here you can see how. Now that the small cave system was complete, it was time to grout it. I used three layers. The first one was thin, so it would cover all the holes. The second and third were thicker and I decided to add brown paint to it for a natural color. After that, I used a black wash to cover all the brown. When this was dry, I dry brushed it with some grey. To make it waterproof and safe for the frogs, I coated it with a layer of epoxy resin. It took away a lot of the detail, but it turned out nice. I had to wait a day between every layer, so this process took me over 5 days. In the meantime, I carved out two pieces of foam and glued them together. I wanted to reach the pump from above and close it off for the rest of the vivarium. After that, I decided that I wanted a plant just above the middle of the entrance of the cave, so its leaves would grow over it in the future. I just made a hole big enough for a small plant pot to fit in. It didn't have to be perfect because I would foam over it later. Now that I had everything that I wanted for the waterfall and cave, it was time to glue it in the terrarium. I let it dry for an hour and started with the expanding foam. I covered all three sides and left it alone for two days. I only put one other flower pot in because I wanted bromeliads to cover most of the sides and back. This flower pot was meant to have a hanging plant in it that would eventually reach the swamp. At this point I didn't know how to separate the swamp with the land, so I decided to use some expanding foam. Later I removed this and used rocks to make it more natural. Now that the foam was dry it was time to carve it. I removed most of it with a knife and decided to try a new technique. With my fingers I pulled out small pieces so it gave a more rock like feeling. At the same time I figured where I wanted the stream of the waterfall to go. Again I used my fingers to shape it. The biggest downside of this technique was that sometimes I pulled off too much foam and created big holes. I decided to fill it up with leftovers of foam which worked fine. The last part before grouting it was make a hole for the waterfall tube and an extra hole so I could get a vein in. I could foam it in, but I like reusing it when I ever break this vivarium down. I then gave the outside of the cave three layers of grout. Again, the first layer was thin so I could cover all the holes. The next two layers were thicker and I added the brown color. Before starting with the paint, I decided to finish the rest of the background. Normally I would use black silicone or elastopur, but I had a lot of epoxy resin laying around. I have to say that it works for frog vivariums, but never use it for animals that climb. I used the same technique in my crested gecko tank, but I have to redo it in the near future. It is not as strong as black silicone or elastopur. Also, epoxy resin is transparent, which made it difficult to see what parts are already covered. When I was done, I saw that I missed a lot of spots that I had to fix later. I used non-toxic glue for this. When the epoxy resin was dry, I started painting the fake rocks. I had no idea what I exactly wanted, so I just started experimenting. First, I gave it a black wash to make it darker. After that, I made a grey white wash and covered half of it for some variation. Next, I made a green wash for some algae and mosses. I did not film this part because it was dark. When it was dry, I dry burst it with some grey to highlight the edges. In the end, this was what it looked like. For the final step, I needed a layer of epoxy resin to make it stronger. Although it takes away a lot of the detail and made the build look shiny, it still turned out nice. Especially when the vivarium was decorated with plants and mosses. Now that most of the vivarium was complete, 
I had to let it dry for at least two weeks. I sprayed it two times a day. When the wait was over, I could finally try out the waterfall. The stream didn't go as I wanted, but I fixed it with some java moss. Besides that, the pond was leaking into the cave and that was a problem that had to be fixed. I made another layer of epoxy resin and poured it into the pond. After letting it dry, again for two weeks, it was finally waterproof. Alright, now that the build was finished, it was time to decorate it. I chose some rocks from a garden center and used it for the line between the swamp and the land. I also bought a lot of the same but smaller rocks and made the base of the swamp. Although I forgot to film it, I filled the space between the rocks with aquarium sand and added a lot of java moss. I then made a drainage layer with clay balls and added a netting on top of it. For the substrate I used Exoterra Eco Earth, a fertilized soil, aquarium sand, leaf litter, bark, sphagnum moss and charcoal. After I decorated it with plants and mosses, I added isopods and springtails. And finally, after 4 weeks of waiting, I could add the frogs. And we're done! Yes! 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 Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or tips, please leave them in the comment section down below. Follow me on Instagram. Shh, 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 shh. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to my channel for some more videos. And I will see you guys in the future. Bye bye.